I belong to the bullying and sexual harassment um, intervention and prevention cadre. And it's a, a cadre that I applied for four years ago. And um, you apply, uh, the information usually comes through the um, state office, your state office, and then they send it out to the locals and you put your application. There's uh, five different cadres that you can apply for and this was one I chose. And uh, so I've been, I'm trained one, every summer we get together and we work on new information um, and put together and, and uh, fix up our presentations and then during the school year we go out to places. So how did you go from your local association and your state association from you know, stepping out into a leadership role in this area for NEA? Um, again, it, it, was, it, it was just an interest of mine locally, um, the bullying, sexual harassment um, sort of issues that were happening. And um, I jumped on the fact that, that there was uh, the NEA in the human and civil rights area of NEA was redoing um, this particular cadre. And um, it, it kind of went along for a while, and I think about four or five years ago, when all of these issues started to peak, um, they decided they recognized that they had to revise what they were doing. And again, I just found the, uh, something came down from my state lo um, organization from the state into my local, and I jumped on the application, and uh, here I am. I did see this as an issue on the campuses, um, and I've always been opposed to um, you know, kids bullying each other and, and that whole sort of, um, you know, equity issue between people and people treating, you know, being that kinder, gentler sort of society I wish that we would all live in. And this just kind of lent itself to um, helping other teachers recognize and then implement programs to get kids to see the importance of all these things. As you look at the just student learning as a whole and what we're trying to do with kids, um, these days, what? How does bullying interfere with that? Oh, it's it really impacts it impacts the kids more than just the target that gets bullied because obviously they're fearful. It's this whole uh, lack of they can't learn if the environment doesn't feel safe to them, and so their absentee rate goes up. Obviously, their academic performance goes down. But we find out that it's not just the target that bystanders, which is a bigger encompassing group, also are impacted by bullying behavior because they see this and they get intimidated by it. Or they feel guilty because I really want to do something but I don't know how or I don't, wanna, I don't want to be the next target or I don't want people to not like me. And so we find out that it's not just this bully and this target but then all of the people that surround it and may see that. And so the impact, obviously, is, is the academic performance. Because if kids don't feel like they're safe at school, they don't feel like they have a sense of belonging, that people care about them, then they're not going to be successful. What does it mean, uh, bully-free, it starts with me? <laughs> means just that, that it's, it's one person at a time. And, and we, we get that, it's the bully-free campaign. Um, and we get individual teachers to, to sign the pledge. And they say, I'm going to do this, and then I am going to impact um, the people that I see every day. And so it's, again, it's that, uh, you know, one, one person at a time till we, till we encompass this, you know, on a big, uh, bigger scale. What's the importance of signing a pledge? The importance is it's easy just to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in that, and I'll do it. But if I actually go and by the end of tomorrow, we have the little cards that we're going to have people um, sent, we're going to have them sign, and, and then they get a poster for their classroom, and, they, and the poster looks like that, and they sign the bottom of it, and they hang it up in their classroom. So it's just like anything else. I mean, if you, we know that, you know, New Year's resolution, okay, I'm going to make them. But when I write them down and I have to look at them periodically, I have more impetus behind me to make that happen. It's the same thing with the campaign. You know, we give you a button, we give you a t-shirt, you've got this poster that you look at, other people look at it, they may question you. And so it's not just something I say, but it, I'm reminded of this commitment that I made it. Okay. You taught a class at CEA today. I think you're going to be back here again tomorrow. What are some of the things that you're trying to get across to a class like this, and how do you think it went today? I think these people were incredible. They were very interactive with us. They were very eager to share. They were open-minded about, um, uh, you know, taking in the program. Um, you know, today the, we gave them um, kind of some background information, and we worked through some activities. 
um, to deal with, you know, bully awareness and so forth. Um, and tomorrow will be fun because we're actually going to let them, we're going to finish up with some things that work and don't work in terms of preventing bullying, and then we're going to move into uh, them developing some action plans for what they could do on their sites. What are they going to commit to? How could you take what we're learning here? And then what we want to finish off the day with is to um, have them go through some of the activities. So we did a bunch of activities today, and they're not just to learn about bullying, but we want there also for them to learn that they could use these. How would they use them with the staffs that they have or their kids? Because a lot of this stuff that we've done here, it can not only be done with the faculty um, on their sites, but it also be done in their classrooms. And, uh, and so we're going to actually, at the end of the day tomorrow, we're going to give them some opportunity to work through some of that and then present and talk to the group at how they would use these activities that they've seen here and experienced here today. Yeah, I kind of led to my next question. What do you hope they will take back to their schools and uh, when, when they hit the ground on Monday? You know, what, what are you hoping for? The idea that they made a commitment, and that commitment's going to be personal. And it's going to be personal based on the experiences that they have on their, whether it's in their classroom or on their campus. And there was a lot of different things that they had talked about. And so they're not all the same. So we can't say, well, I want everybody to do this. It's really, um, what are you going to commit to? Are you going to commit to talking to your faculty? Are you going to commit to taking a look at some policies that you see after we've had these discussions today about things like sexting and cyberbullying that you know you don't have good policies for how to deal with those? Are you going to you know, take some of these activities to help make your campus uh, safe you know, for your students? Um, so we want them to make a personal commitment based on um, how are they going to impact the sites that they're at to lessen the incidence of this bullying and sexual harassment. Okay. Now, you know we've um, had some legislation in Colorado, uh, measure passed a year or two ago, and, uh, you know, they have this bully movie that came out. What do you think states, you know, with legislation and, and this movie, and how do you think this is kind of impacting the whole awareness of this issue? I think it brings, it's good that states are doing something and it's good that there's, they've, you know, invested in a movie, but putting a bunch of kids in an auditorium to watch a movie is not as impactful as working with them, um, you know, on a smaller basis. And I think then some people had talked about when we were talking about some intervention types of activities and, and they brought the fact that, boy, it would be better to do this in home room, where maybe if you watch that in your home room, then there's opportunity for just to have a conversation with these 25 or 30 kids versus everybody's impact, packed into the auditorium. We're going to watch this bullying movie, and, you know, what, a, what effect does it have? Who knows? You understand more of the impact that you're having if you're having that conversation. Um, and monitoring your smaller group doing that. So it's got to be more personal. Absolutely. This has got to be, this can't be conquered on a mass scale. And that's kind of like the, you know, the bully free starts with me. It starts right here and then it goes forward. 